uh, in this video we are going to look at uh, the Carnot's ideal heat engine. Uh, in the previous video we had a look at uh, a heat engine and uh, what we observed was that uh, in a heat engine you have heat Q1 being received from a source and W is the work done and heat Q2 is given off to the sink. Right? Uh, Carnot ideal engine, right? He, uh, Sadi Carnot was a French uh, scientist who proposed an uh, ideal heat engine. Right? It was a plan that he proposed as to what are the various parts of a Carnot engine, of a, uh, an ideal heat engine, and uh, he proposed a thermodynamic cycle for the same. Uh, of course, it's not possible to actually make an engine based on Carnot's ideal cycle, but ideal cycle, but uh, it is a good reference point, it is a good starting point to design heat engines. So in this video we will look at the various uh, parts of a Carnot heat engine and um, the thermodynamic cycle that he proposed. Uh, basically he uh, proposed four parts, right? four parts of a Car Carnot uh, heat engine. The first one being a piston cylinder arrangement. As you can see over here, this is the piston cylinder arrangement. And this piston cylinder arrangement was uh, uh, such that it was to be frictionless because we are talking of an ideal heat engine. It is frictionless, it is airtight, it is insulated, heat insulated, right? right. And uh, finally it has a perfectly, perfectly conducting base. So uh, it is insulated from all three sides except for the base. So this is the base which is perfectly conducting, but otherwise it is insulated, insulated from this side, this side, and from the top. And this friction, there's no friction in this piston. So when this piston moves up and down over here, there's no energy loss due to friction, and it is airtight, meaning there are no, the gas doesn't escape or leak out of this, right? So that's the piston cylinder arrangement that Carnot proposed. And, uh, he proposed three more parts, right? He proposed three parts. Let us look at one then one. What he proposed was uh, this. This is an infinite, infinitely large source at higher temperature, at higher temperature T1, right? So this is an infinitely large source of heat, which is at temperature T1. And this is an infinitely large sink at lower temperature T2, right? And this particular part, this is a perfectly insulated stand, stand, right? So this is a stand which is, gives perfect insulation, so there will be no heat losses. Right. So these were the four parts that he proposed. Now the reason why he proposed an infinitely large source of higher temperature T1 is this can uh, maintain the temperature of the gas inside the cylinder at the same value. Supposing the temperature over here is 70 degrees Celsius, when you bring it in contact with an infinitely large source at the same temperature, the temperature will be maintained even if there is expansion of the gas happening. Uh, we will look at it in uh, detail right? when we look at the cycle. So that was the reason for having infinitely large source of uh, an infinitely large sink at lower temperature T2. L let's move further. So well, the first step, the first step uh, that Carnot proposed was that. Uh, okay, before I start, let me give short names to this. We'll call the piston cylinder arrangement as PC. Right. Of course, I have also forgot to mention that this will have an ideal gas field over here. So, piston cylinder arrangement we will call as PC. Infinitely large uh, source we will call as SO. Right. And insulating stand we will call IS and this we will call as SI. Right. So, SI. Short forms so that it saves time. And Okay. So, the first step. First step is uh, put the PC, that is the piston cylinder arrangement, on SO. Right? So we're keeping the piston cylinder arrangement, right? It is at temperature T1. So the temperature of the gas here is T1 and we keep it over here, right, on PC. And 
infinitely slowly remove the weights infinitely slowly we remove the weights right so what happens in this process is you are removing the weight slowly so there is expansion happening but since this piston cylinder arrangement or rather this particular gas is in contact with an infinitely large source at temperature t1 temperature of the gas here is maintained at t1 so temperature remains constant even though expansion is happening and therefore this process is isothermal expansion it's isothermal expansion in the second part we shift the piston cylinder arrangement pc is now kept on the insulating stand so from here we shift it over here right so when we shift it over here there are no heat losses because it is insulated from this side from this side from the top and now it is also insulated from the bottom so there are no heat losses and infinitely slowly remove okay i think i am going a bit out of the page right remove the weights right okay i'll have to keep on moving the page up and down right so piston cylinder arrangement on the insulating stand and we are removing the weight slowly so what is happening over here again is if we'll go back to this uh, picture of this this is going up right but it is kept on an insulating stand so there are no heat losses so there are there's no heat coming into this piston nor any heat is going out but expansion is happening so temperature drops right temperature drops and the process becomes adiabatic expansion adiabatic expansion because expansion is happening but there are no heat losses right in the third step the pc is now kept on the sink right and we now infinitely slowly add the weights we slowly add the weights right and in this process now what happens is temperature remains constant because again we are keeping it on a infinitely large source 